Good morning, everyone. So uh, today, my talk is going to be mm -hmm. on nanocrystalline cellulose, the new hot material, as we term it. So, so I first start off by giving uh, some background information about cellulose, which is basically the most common organic polymer um, currently available. And it is an environmentally friendly material which is renewable. And some of the current uses of uh, cellulose is as a coating material in additives, um, in pharmaceutical, in the food industry, in cosmetic industry. And the sources of, um, of cellulose is in wood, um, in, co in cotton, tourniquet, and from ramai. Now, the structure of cellulose uh, is basically repeat units of uh, glucose. And for each anhydroglucose unit, you would be able to see three hydroxyl groups. Now, what is exactly a nanocrystalline cellulose? So if we take the structure of native cellulose, it consists of the crystalline region. So you can see the crystalline region and the amorphous region. Now, if we do subject this um, uh, cellulose to acid hydrolysis, we'll be able to, to chop off the amorphous region and yield only the crystalline part, which is basically the nanocrystalline cellulose, or NCC. Now, some of the properties of NCC is that it has a um, high aspect ratio, it has a high surface ar area, very good thermal properties, it has a thermal degradation, uh, which is fairly high. Um, it is considered it is currently stronger than Kevlar. And um, at high concentration, it has some liquid crystalline properties. And, and come on to uh, cellulose, it, has, it is renewable, and it has um, fairly low cost. Now, um, I'll now talk about um, the, the importance of charge on the surface of NCC. So um, it is more some technical terms, zeta potential that um, we use to quantify the, the magnitude of the equilibrium charge on, um, on a particle. And so this is how our NCC looks. And if we disperse it in water, that's um, the kind of dispersion, fairly clear and stable dispersion that we obtain. And uh, we'll see no sedimentation up to um, per month, I guess, in our case, we've tested that. And um, we usually use the zeta potential to uh, test the stability of, um, of a colloidal suspension. So for our, for our NCC that we get from AITF, the zeta potential is about a minus 55 uh, millivolts. And the charge is mainly due to the sulfate groups present um, due to the hydrolysis process. So we can see the, um, the charge, and this helps stabilize the colloid. Now, uh, we were able to, um, to characterize these uh, material, these NCC um, rod type material by uh, microscopy. So we do scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy. And we're able to see a rod shaped particles of about 100 nanometer in uh, length and about 10 to 20 nanometer in, um, in uh, width. Now, um, these data were also uh, confirmed by a uh, dynamic light, light scattering experiment, which gave about the same uh, size. Now, let's look at NCC as a colloid. So a colloid um, is a substance which is evenly distributed into another substance. And a commonly known um, colloidal material would be um, milk, shaving cream, whipped cream, blood, etc. And um, NCC also has the ability to disperse uniformly in water to form a very stable colloidal suspension. So we take NCC powder, which I showed earlier, and we disperse it in water. And if we deposit that material on a TEM grid for visualization for microscopy, um, for microscopy, we'll be able to see well dispersed rod shaped particle. Now, if we do the same for we take some uh, NCC powder, we, pl we place it into an organic solvent such as styrene, we do see lots of sedimentation and aggregation here. And this uh, particular uh, problem with NCC, where it is not compatible with organic solvent limits, its application. So from now on, we're interested in modifying 
the uh, surface of NCC so that we can expand the, um, the possible application of NCC. So the first um, part that I'll, I'll talk about is non-covalent functionalization. So if we consider this as the NCC rod, and we basically have to wrap around a polymer onto the surface. And this polymer is basically held onto the, um, the NCC surface by electrostatic interaction between negatively charged NCC and a positively charged polymer. Now, the second thing we could do is basically a covalent functionalization. So if you can remember, we have hydroxyl groups on the surface of our NCC, and then we do our chemistry on it to modify the surface. Now, um, the first uh, project I'm going to talk about is uh, for the non-covalent functionalization that we are currently doing is for NCC as a general support for future biosensor material. So what we do is basically we take NCC, we coat it with a polymer, and then we do a gold deposition, and then uh, followed by enzyme uh, binding to design the biosensor material. <coughs> so uh, this is how um, our goal uh, look like, and this is how our NCC um, polymer complex look like. And upon gold deposition, we can clearly see some uh, dark spots, which basically shows us the deposition of gold onto the surface of our NCC. Now, um, uh, my colleague is currently uh, working on uh, on, bind, uh, on binding the enzyme to uh, to the NCC surface, and some of the work is already done, but um, I'm not really seeing everything. So, um, if you do want to talk a bit more about this uh, during break time, you can talk to my colleague Vanessa Incani. She is in, in here in the audience. So what we're aiming to do basically is, once we have uh, the enzyme bound, is we plan to pack it into a column, so, um, and then uh, pour in an analyte, and then analyze it, or make thin films, <coughs> and then test uh, and use this material for analysis in medical or um, environmental engineering. So for sort of to detect, let's say, different analyte glucose, alcohol, or, um, for a waste water control or pollution. So these are some of the uh, possible applications. Now the second uh, project that um, I I'm currently working on is basically uh, designing smart materials. Now uh, polynipam is a thermal responsive polymer which um, has the ability to, to change its chain conformation based on temperature. So at low temperature what it does, it, it just contracts its arms and becomes more soluble. And at higher temperature, it basically extends its arm and it sort of crashes out of solution. So this is basically some synthesis. I'll basically skip that. Um, and so this is uh, showing the thermoresponsive behavior of polynipam. So at low temperature, which is basically, in this case, uh, 20 degree, we see a fairly clear solution. But if you warm it up, up to 35 degree, you see a, a milkier <coughs> solution, which demonstrates the thermal responsive behavior of, um, of the polynipam grafted NCC. Now, um, some of the characterization to confirm that we have basically made a, a material which has a thermal responsive polymer onto it. Um, so we do see a change in size. A slight difference in the size of, uh, of the nanomaterial. We also see a change in the zeta potential, so because we have do, done a reaction on the surface of the NCC, we can actually uh, see a, a change from minus 55 millivolt to around minus 20 millivolt. We also see new peaks in um, FTIR for analysis. Now, um, in addition, we also do X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy to confirm that we have uh, actually done modification and change um, using this, uh, the, the data we have obtained for the change in oxygen. So we have, we're currently studying the rheology of uh, this new material, and, and we have, we'll be shortly publishing some of these results. 
Now, um, like I mentioned before, possible applications of, NC, of NCC we are working on is basically in drug delivery application, or one of it is the biosensor uh, material, design of a smart material that I just talked about. And uh, we're also working on uh, composites, reinforcing polymers, and some water treatment options. And I'd like to acknowledge my uh, supervisor, Dr. Uh, Yaman Bolek, my colleagues, Dr. Christophe Darima, and uh, Dr. Vanessa Nkani, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have uh, any questions? Yes? Uh, could you please comment on the health uh, aspects of the non-crystal cell because of its aspect ratio? For me, personally, it looks like we would have the same problems as we have this aspect. Um, Right now, we, um, we, we are not really a group looking into the health aspect of it. We're more like a material group. So we, we are focusing more on um, getting it out as um, investigating the, the possible applications of it. We haven't really studied the uh, toxicology aspect of it yet. But we did not. We're, we're actually engaged in that. That's what we We're supposed to be. We're engaged in that project, the ACC project on looking at some health and safety at least, um, at least from the environmental perspective. So we are starting that work right now, and then the occupational work has actually gone on. There's quite a bit that's been done through um, Quebec, which also has a, a variety of work going on there, and the pilot plant in Quebec. So there are some occupational health and safety data already coming in. But those studies are underway, they're not completely dead. There's a question at the back. Regarding there's Regarding the application of the cellulose for treatment to water, what kind of the treatment, chemical, physical, or biological? Uh, for the water treatment, is that? Application of the cellulose for treatment of the water, what kind of the treatment, physical, chemical, or biological? Um, so in, in, right now for, for the water treatment that I mentioned, um, we are basically using a different material, not really, uh, not so much the NCC because it's more expensive than. But um, we, um, it's, it's more in collaboration with uh, a group in environmental engineering, whereby we are trying to see the absorption of uh, heavy metal from um, from um, oil sands processed in water, and see if that will actually um, take out the heavy metal, which we can, um, you know, collect at the end. And there's one more question at the back. Yeah, just quickly, your modified material, um, is the thermal response reversible? Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I'm just not talking. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much for all. Uh,